It's the start of the MasterChef semi-finals. After weeks of competition, only the six best amateurs are left. Every challenge that I do, I feel I'm growing in terms of my technique and my confidence. The further on through the competition you get, the more perfect you want your dishes to become. The standard of competition is much higher than I was expecting. I am getting more confident and I am starting to believe in myself. We're really, really close um, and I really want it now. Just maybe I could win this, but, you know, it's still quite a long way yet, so... Over the next three shows, they'll be pushed beyond anything they've experienced before. Come on, just do it, just put it on. Honestly, trust me, you're gonna have to just go. This is the most fabulous dish I've ever seen. Then only four will remain. The person leaving us is... It's early morning, and the contestants are heading east for their first big challenge, to a location not necessarily known for its fine dining. Good morning, and welcome to probably the most famous square in the country. You've got the privilege today for cooking for 120 members of the cast and crew of EastEnders. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to split you into two teams. Three of you on the right, one team. Three of you on the left, the other team. Right now, we want you to pick a team leader. I'm, I don't mind being it. Ping, you seem quite assertive. Would you yeah, like to be a team leader? So. I don't, if you don't want to be it, I would be more than happy to be a team leader. I'm, I'm happy to do it. You do. Michael, Jack and Ping, who's your team leader? I am. Good. Luke, Robert and Angela, who's your team leader? I am. Luke. Luke is. Wow, brilliant, good, OK. Be careful, because many people have died walking through that square. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, off you go. Two kitchens have been specially constructed for the contestants to use. Along with a dining marquee outside the Queen Vic, where the cast and crew will be served. For today's lunch, each team will be responsible for feeding one of the tables. This is one of the biggest shows on BBC television. And we're here today at Alba Square, feeding the cast of East Enders. I can't believe we're here, it's amazing. When I saw that, the Queen Vic, it's like, wow. <laughs> That's cool. It's crazy and very surreal to find ourselves in Albert Square. It's a bit my blade to be honest. <laughs> Each team has a different selection of ingredients from which they will have to produce 60 main courses and 60 desserts. Guys, what have we got? Oh, a bit of turbot. Ping's team has the fish tent. I have never cooked that big a fish before. While Luke's has been given the meat. OK, so we've got guinea fowl, chicory, celery. Kill. Yeah, we've got some sort of micro herbs Walnuts. going on. Obviously, I'm the youngest out of the three, so it's, uh, it's strange being uh, younger than your employees. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting everybody organised and making sure that we're going to deliver this on time and tasting very good. We could cut the drumstick off and use the thigh because it's gorgeous well, meat. We could we, stuff the thighs. Yeah, we could uh, stuff the thighs. You're going down a very kind of classic yeah. route there, aren't you? I like nice. classic cooking, personally, so... Nothing wrong with classic cooking. Both teams will also have to produce 10 vegetarian versions of their main. We can do an open lasagna. 
I think we can use some of the asparagus and beans as well to give it some body. Brittle. Really, really tough. We never cooked in an open kitchen before and 120 calories, that's a lot of people. Right, let's go. What do you got? Right, for me, we have uh, guinea fowl breast and stuffed thigh. Uh, We've mini roast rosemary potatoes, parsnip and kale with a masala sauce. OK. For dessert, we're doing poached pears with a uh, creme anglaise and with pastry twists. OK, doke. Thank you. Good. <laughs> now we just got to cook it. Main course, we have turbot, tomato, clam and fennel stew with pom puree. Uh, dessert with chocolate tart, mascarpone cream, and plum compote. Uh, sounds delicious. Yep. Good job. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm excited. I'm not excited for the poor person who's got to do 60 portions of chocolate tart, but I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> the teams now have four and a half hours to get lunch ready for the EastEnders cast and crew. Over at the Queen Vic, filming has already started. The schedule is run with military precision. With up to 30 scenes to film each day and strictly one hour for lunch, the teams cannot afford to be late. So guys, these are our prep sheets. So um, Michael, you're on fish portion, yeah. you're on fish. Um, you're on pastry and I'm on the sauce and the vegetarian. Let's you go. Know what you're doing? Yeah, go Yay. All right, let's get to it. Go on then. What? Worksheets. Prep sheet. Ooh, wow! Cool! Well, I've got to say, if you can cook as well as you write prep sheets, I'm going to be really impressed. In the meat tent, Robert is in charge of butchering the 30 guinea fowl. Angela is working the sauce section and is also preparing the black pudding stuffing for the guinea fowl thighs whilst team leader Luke is making a start on the veg. I'm relying on these guys a lot here because this is more their kind of food. I'm doing the really, uh, you know, the kitchen porter type work <laughs> and hopefully keeping everyone organised at the same time. Well, I like to think the real manager behind all this is actually standing over here, so it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to add flavour to the stock for her sauce, Angela starts by roasting the guinea fowl trimmings. Obviously, we've got a lot to do, and I've never cooked for 60. Well, yeah, this is, like, alien territory. Come on, Angela. <laughs> Pull. Push one. Push one, so you've got a lever. Oh, my God. Yeah, I've just it, opened it, 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 but... <laughs> Blimey. Next door in the fish tent... Ready? Yeah. Michael's first job is to portion off 60 servings from the eight turbot. Wow. Just need to get a couple of these done and then I should get quicker with them then. We've got our head together and really thought about what we were doing before we started doing it. So hopefully we can work quite methodically rather than, rather than it being a mad panic. That said, we'll see if it's not a mad panic a little bit later, I guess. Jack is already working the pastry for the chocolate tart. So I've made pastry a couple of times before. It's not something that I do regularly. I think it should be fine. I'm confident it will work, so yeah. And Ping is busy prepping the vegetables for the tomato and fennel stew. Mm -hmm. Ping, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Well, I'm trying... <laughs> I'm trying not to... Uh... Let the onion get to me. I read somewhere that, you know, getting a spoon in your mouth works, but clearly it doesn't. Well, if you're going to grate onions, no wonder they... Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh! I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm not grating them, I'm probably just chopping them. Yes, I'm dying. The onions, tomato and fennel now have to simmer until service. How did you divide the labour up, then, between you and your two young lads? Jack has done the pastry in his invention test before, and Michael works with fish quite a lot, and he cooks fish in the last round, and I'm quite good with sauces. Brilliant. Come in. Come in. Working with Ping, yep. is it like being back at school? <laughs> uh, 
No, it's been by committee, I think. So, uh, no, it's not like my school, anyway. Did you go to school? I, I did, yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> For the minimum amount of time required, Greg. Why have you ended up with the, uh, with the least creative job? Why do you think they see you very much as a kitchen porter? It's got to be done, and I think... I was the only one who could be trusted with such an expensive quality ingredient, so... <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <Yeah>. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop giggling? <laughs> Between Michael, Jack and Ping, Ping is the leader, and I tell you what, she's a great motivator. How are we getting on? How are we getting on? Yeah, we're getting on all right, I think, Ping. Yes! She's got her lists up, they all know what they're doing, but she's also encouraging, and that's a wonderful way to work. In the meat tent, Luke is still peeling the five kilograms of parsnips for their main course. How are we doing, people? Um, yeah, we're OK. I need to get this veg done by an hour, and I think I'm on it. <laughs> right, who's got time, please? Who's keeping time? Um, Robert's keeping time. I'm keeping time. What? I'm keeping time. We're 45 minutes in. 45 minutes in. And we can have a break in 15 minutes. A break? Oh, right, no, a, break. a, 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 a team a, meeting. Hurry up. Quick, meeting. quick, quick. Pass tips done. Uh, I'm just, just, yes, finishing them off. <laughs> Robert is trying to make a dent in the butchering of the 30 guinea fowl. I'm just taking off the guinea fowl five before they get stuffed. It's a tedious job <laughs> and a time consuming job, but it's just flying through it, getting it done. If it works perfectly, it's a fantastic team effort. If it falls apart, it's Luke's fault. Oh, yeah. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, so get working. <laughs> As leader, yep. what is nagging away at you? What's bothering you? Time. Always the time. We need to have everything on and cooking an hour before the first plate goes out. We've got things that can be held, uh, but there are things that we've got to, you know, they've got to be done fresh, ready to go. The meat tent is being hosted by Luke, Angela and Robert, and I tell you what, it is going to be a battle for those guys. I think they've got a lot of work to do. Your pass it's on, Luke. Uh, yeah, I'm dead. Oh, mate, I'm you just got to finish on the, the job. You're running around, but not finishing your own job. Okay, finish your own job. It's 10:30 a.m. and behind the scenes, the production team is hard at work. We have one hour for lunch, so we have to stick to that one hour. That short space of time to eat the best food we can possibly get is, is absolutely vital because an army marches on its stomach. Whilst back in the Queen Vic, the filming is running on schedule. OK, here we go. So Number ones, please. OK, stand by to block. Guys, how are you looking? You're about halfway, and I really need you to push now. Yeah. With the turbot portioned, Michael has to cook the cockles. And then pick each one individually. This is repetitive grunt work, I think, is probably what it is. Jack is blind baking the chocolate tart cases. Ping is ahead with her prep and has moved on to the filling for the vegetarian lasagna. I reckon I'm five minutes away from the preparation for the filling and then we reconvene at 11 o'clock, OK? OK. Yeah. I think our leader, she's organised. I was going to use the word militant, but no, she's organised. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're on top of things, I think. Chocolate filling. Are you doing a chocolate filling? Yeah, doing the filling now. Right. For the filling to work, the chocolate mixture can't be too hot or the eggs will cook. Ping. I've just put the eggs in. I'm just worried that so I'm just kind of curdled. It will be like that. No, just looks like it's going. splitting. Keep going. Mm -mm. At this point, we we don't really have any choice. I think it's just a case of getting them into the oven, getting them cooked, and just praying just a little bit. I think. Over in the meat tent, Angela is on the last stages of her sauce. But Robert is still prepping the 30 guinea fowl. OK, so we are a little bit behind here. No, we're not. You're, you're OK. You're ahead. Brilliant. Ahead. Right, that's great. Well, I'm behind. <laughs> 
Luke has finished the kale for the main course, but still needs to prepare 60 portions of roast potatoes before he can even start the vegetarian mushroom parcels. OK, one lot of the parsnips is overcooked. What's that? One lot of the parsnips is overcooked. Is it overcooked? Definitely over. Yeah, it's and like... Have you taken them off? Or... I'm just doing Sorry, it right yep. now. I'm worried about how long things are taking. I need to move on to the vegetarian option very soon. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm panicking a little. Well, not panicking, but I am concerned. We'll just have to pull it back somewhere. isn't quite there yet. Sorry? It's all right, it's all right. You okay? Yeah, yeah. You all right? Can you come in and have a look at something? Yeah. Yes? Well, the, obviously, I've only just added the stock, but it's not particularly... I don't think it's very nice. Is this... Do... Doing? It's all right. Yeah. Luke, don't you? All right, okay. And a bit of masala will sweeten it up a little bit and give it that depth Well, we, that it's want. already got loads of masala in it. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I've almost all run Madeira. out. The Madeira, it's all gone. It's all gone. I'd just reduce it. I think it'll be fine. OK. Robert's finally finished butchering the guinea fowl, but still has to stuff 30 thighs with black pudding. Tear off 30 bits of foil, lay out 10. Yeah. Butter them, filling, roll 10 up. And just do it like that. And do the next 10. Yeah, yeah. OK, so you're just working the system like that. That sounds like a wonderful idea. I'm just thinking that's probably too much. To I do there. think so, yes. Yeah. Let's take it down. Yeah. A little is this bit. your first one? This is the first one, so. Right. Guys, can I just talk to you for a sec? Yeah. At the moment you've got no dessert started at all. At all. Yeah. How, how long before those potatoes are done? Um, one minute, uh, two minutes. Right. I would suggest to you, once you've done the potatoes, I get you, the need, you need to get those pears poached. Right. Because okay. at the moment, Robert's not going to get them done, is he? If he's like this. Well, I'm. I mean, you've really got to move, because that's gonna, if each one of those take you five minutes at the moment, you are in big trouble. OK? So quick, 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 quick. How are we all for doing the mash, then? Shall, in fact, shall I come and muck in doing that with you now? And yes. And come back to this, yeah? Yes. funny, you know, your head's down and you're working through all the jobs that you need to do and you kind of forget where you are and then you just have a little look outside and then, you know, outside the Green Vic. It's, uh, it's bizarre. It's very surreal. Jack's tarts are finally ready to go in the fridge to set. He can now concentrate on the pasta for the vegetarian lasagna while Ping makes the morels, asparagus and pine nut filling. Guys, you really need to be ready and all sorted in an hour and a quarter. Do we want to put the fish in? Yeah, I, I think we get on that in the next five minutes. Yeah, I think they need to go in. Is your turbot not in at all? No. You better hurry up, guys. How are you getting on with the pasta, Jack? Yeah, it's just really time-consuming without a pasta maker. It's naturally, it's very tense. I mean, it's hard not to be tense in these situations. We've obviously got a lot to do. But I think, fundamentally, our processes are all done and we've just got the mammoth task of playing it all up. How are the chocolate tarts? Anybody have a look? I think they're, um, they're nearly there, John. They're... Oh, Jack, it looks like they might set. <laughs> yeah, well, this one, look, if you watch, look, watch. Yeah, that one's sort of better. I See just that one there, but watch. Yeah, that one's a bit wobbly, but watch this one, look. <laughs> oh, I hope so for your sake, all that hard work. So do I. you got about an hour to, we need you to be ready. That's all pears poached, custard made, sauces finished, potatoes ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah? I really, I'm quite worried about the birds, actually. Are they about to go in? They or? should go in now. Start me a timer, please, Robert. Have you got to, where's the timer? Timer, timer, timer. Robert has nearly finished stuffing the thighs, whilst Luke is rushing to make a start on the 60 poached pears for their dessert. Are we going to leave the tops of the pears on and we're just going straight up to the stalk or what? Leave the stalk on the end. And for the 
few seconds extra it's going to take, I think it'll be worthwhile. <laughs> you think we've got seconds extra? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> right, OK. I admire Robert's confidence. I wish I had it too. Guys, 30 minutes for main courses, please. 30 minutes. With one eye on her reducing sauce, Angela begins the seven litres of custard to go with the poached pears. I'm nervous about doing creme anglaise in such huge quantities, because it could be scrambled egg that we're eating rather than creme anglaise. <laughs> Robert, could you check that end oven and see what temperature it's at? I can't seem to find the bloody thermostat. That's to... not on at all, that oven. You're kidding me? No, it's not on at all. What? What the...? It's what? not I've just... Well, it has, but to fill it. There's no temperature. No, there. It, it, there is temperature. Shut the door. And, <laughs> I, what is going on with this? Why have we not got any control here? I've got no idea. Those potatoes are nearly done. Put those potatoes in that oven. Oh, wait, Robert, could you put the boat birds yeah. on the top, potatoes on the bottom, please? Come on. How are we getting on in John to Road's tent? I mean, Luke's tent. Doing all right. We have had trouble with the ovens. Um, and trouble with the ovens? Yeah. It's not an excuse. Well, how's the birds looking? The ovens are on absolutely maximum, and the birds aren't as cooked as we thought they should be by this time. You know you've got ten minutes, don't you? Yeah. Do, 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 <laughs> do, do. In the Vic, they've just finished shooting the last scene of the morning. We're back in one hour, we're going to have a lot and have a very special lunch. <laughs> on a shoot like this, if we lose a minute, it impacts us down the line. People doing their makeup checks after lunch, uh, people getting to lunch, so it's very important. You've got to eat. We do 12 hour days, they're long days, so we're all very excited to see what we're going to get supplied to us. So I can't wait to get up there. I'm going to be at the back of the queue because of this, but not to worry. Anything else? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Five minutes. We now need to play up in five minutes. Okay, great. There's no hiding, it's, it's got to happen. So let's get it, let's get a move on, yeah? Jack, you give a hand on skinning the fish. Skin them all on one side and then flip them over. Flip them over here. the other side, OK? Nice and easy. Nice and gentle. This fish is thick, so it's going to retain its heat, so that's good. Luke has just minutes to wrap and cook his mushroom parcels. Could you get me a pan of oil on for deep frying? Pan of oil on for deep frying. For deep frying. Well, have we got a pan? Number one. Okay. Um, any tray, anything, anything I can deep fry in. Ah. Excuse me. Watch your backs. That's your first ones, right? You're getting carved. Put them back in the trays, please. And they still have the 60 guinea fowl breasts to carve. Someone else could carve as well. We could do two people carving if if there's time pressure or are you alright? Yeah. If, getting... if you could carve, Rob, that'd be great. Guys, the cast and crew are walking through now. A whole lot of them. Literally, I know you're excited, Angela. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so am I. I'm excited as well. But get the food out, mate, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> the 120 cast and crew now have a choice between the two menus. We're pretty used to potato wedges here. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a real treat for us. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm quite, look at all this stuff. It looks very professional. The red table will be served Luke's menu. I love fowl. A nice bit of fowl. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I've had some nice tiny little chicken, so I'm going to try the nice tiny little chicken with a stuffed fire. I'm starving, yeah. Can't wait for a bit of guinea. And the blue table, Ping's menu. I'm definitely glad I went for the blue menu. I sort of saw it and it had everything on there that I love, so. I prefer the blue dessert, unfortunately, so I might have to slip over there and eat a bit of the chocolate. One, two, three, four. Do it in a lot of ten, OK? Outside, it's four degrees. 
and the teams now have to work out a system to get their 60 main courses plated and over to the dining tent without them getting cold. There you go, cooked, really good. Right, bring them all out. Yeah. Is that a good size, do you think? That's, that's, that's fine. Yep. You think? See, that OK, one. you've got yeah. to do a job each. Two jobs one. each and yeah. up. Go, go, go. Go, go, Quick. go. Sauce. No, 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 no. You'll be there all day like that, mate. Come on. You've got 60 places to do. Come on, go. First 12, three minutes, please. And then once you've done your first 12, batches of 12, please. Good, looking nice. We're very hungry. They must be under a lot of pressure and feeling really nervous. Quick, 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 pile them up. Thanks a lot. Fire on this one, please. I'm expecting it to be really good. I'm very interested in the masala sauce. Love a bit of masala. This is a really big treat for us, because we obviously don't have this laid out every lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Come on, just do it. Just put it on. Honestly, trust me, you're going to have to just go as fast as you possibly can. Cross, go. Just lift it. Yeah. There we go. Right. Half the tables have been served. I'm not sure that I've had guinea fowl. It's really nice. Now the race is on to get the rest out. You're doing well. I'm proud of you. Keep up the intensity. Keep up the pace. Ping's team are getting into their stride. We're cracking through, you know? There's, there's more to get out, but we're cracking through. Come on, let's go. The next six, please. Just line them up now. Go, go, go. But the meat tent are struggling. I wish they'd liven this soap up. You know, I made 20 minutes of them waiting. We got sauce on them? Yep. Go, go, go. Oh, he's coming out now, look. Oh. Here we go. Luke's team's main is roasted guinea fowl breast and thigh stuffed with black pudding, served with roast potatoes with rosemary, crushed parsnips and kale, and Angela's masala sauce. The taters were on the money. They were really nice. It's good. It tastes nice. However, um, they rate the sauce that I was promised. Don't be shy with the gravy. Never yeah. be shy with the gravy. Oh. I thought it was really tasty. It was like a very rich turkey, but it was cold. But it tasted lovely. Listen, mate, I'll tell you what, it's freezing. <laughs> if, if it was just a bit warmer, it's it'd be freezing. nice. It's not freezing. It's cold. What are you talking about? <laughs> I need more gravy. Nothing worse than a bit of cold parsnip. <laughs> Got to eat it lively. Got to eat it quick. I've never had guinea fowl before. <laughs> So, um, I'll definitely be having it again. But it had potential to be beautiful. That's the frustrating thing. But, no, I can't have a bit of cold parsnip wrapped around you. For their vegetarian option, Luke's team have substituted the guinea fowl with a wild mushroom and walnut parcel. I enjoyed it. Potatoes were good. Nice idea, the mushrooms and the little bit of vegetarian gravy there. It's lovely. Yeah, really lovely. Listen, if they can manage to do this for this amount of people, I think it's fantastic. Ping's team's main is turbot, served with a tomato and fennel stew, cockles and a pom puree. I thought the fish was delicious, absolutely exquisite, beautifully cooked, lovely. Really nice piece of fish, nice creamy potato. And the sweetness of the tomato is really coming through. I'm particularly liking the cockles. Delicious. The fish dish may be a hit, but one batch of the turbot is undercooked. It's delicious fish, but I don't think it's completely cooked, no. Yeah. So I'll steer around that bit. Concept good, execution. For their vegetarian option, 
they've served an open lasagna, filled with morels, asparagus and pine nuts, with the tomato and fennel stew on the side. It's really nice, it's really tasty. It's got a nice little bit of spice. It's quite nice and moist. It's lovely. Yeah. We've just been told dessert service, please. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. The teams have taken 45 minutes to serve the 120 main courses. Get rid of all that stuff off the bench. Yep. 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 All of it. 60 plates down that one as well, Robert. They now have just 15 minutes to serve dessert before the lunch break is over. It's all worked out. It's cutting well, it's cooked, it's solid. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it looks so far. Right, let's go. Tart on. Jack, I'm really impressed, buddy. Really impressed. Look at the beautiful vanilla in that custard. I'll tell you what, I'm proud of you guys. That is a lovely food. Come on, go, 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 go. Syrup on. Syrup on. Go, 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 guys. Go, 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 go. Go. Oh, Careful. Yes. Luke's team's dessert is cinnamon and saffron poached pears, a puff pastry ring, creme anglaise, and a crushed walnut brittle. I reckon I've got to be about five minutes to get these pears into me, and then I'm back on work. <laughs> Bloody good pears, though. <laughs> Not as lovely as your pear. <laughs> your garden, your tree. I've got pear trees. It's got a pear tree. <laughs> I like a pear. The pear's really nice. It tastes a bit, a bit like licorice. That's lovely. Ping's team's dessert is chocolate tart with mascarpone cream and a spiced plum compote. Nice. Out of this world. It's absolutely delicious. It's a really, really nice combination. Yeah, it's really good. The desserts are proving to be a hit. I actually swapped it with someone on the other table. I should have done it, but, but that was lovely. You can't waste the chocolate cake. This is certainly not the sort of thing you'd ever find in Albert Square. I'm, I'm used to pies, pies and chips. A lot of people to look after, so yeah, they've done a really good job. Thanks. Oh, very full. Yeah, I've ate everything. I've eaten everyone's that they left. Really nice. Oh, guys. Well, well done. 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 <laughs> oh my god. High fives all around. Well done, mate. Awesome well chocolate tart. Well done, guys. I know. Look at it's set. Awesome. I'll tell you what, they've never had an experience like it. I've never had an experience like it. That was quite incredible. I have to say, those desserts were exceptional. And praise to Ping and her team. They look like a team of pros. As far as uh, leadership's concerned, Ping had it all wrapped up. She commanded her troops, she really did. That was really good, really hard work. I mean, we haven't stopped. I couldn't ask for a better team. I think my team was awesome. From that team, I've got to tip my hat to Jack, because that chocolate tart was immense. Really, very, very good indeed. Such a great experience, such a surreal environment and surroundings, but it was a lot of fun today. I really enjoyed it, and I hope they, they enjoyed it as well. If there was brilliant organisation in Ping's tent, there was fantastic cooking going on in Luke's tent. They came out in the end, but I tell you what, I spent a lot of time in that tent because they were in disarray. But what we end up with was something quite amazing. 
it was a very difficult challenge, you know. It was annoying for me that we, we did need to have, you know, help. But overall, fairly pleased that there's bags of, bags of room for improvement. I've got to say, I've got my standouts. So there's a couple of stars today, absolute stars, and one or two falling behind the pack. Welcome back, U6. We only have five places in the next round. That means that one of you is leaving the competition. From U6 today, we want refined food. Refined food that impresses, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 minutes. The best plate of food you've cooked in the competition so far. Let's cook. I found the last challenge really exciting. Today, I've just got to do the best dish I possibly can and hope that someone else screws up. You have an array of vegetables to rival many a greengrocer. What is the dish? A ballotine of chicken stuffed with a Spanish black pudding, a small casserole of houdillon beans with chorizo, a mini cauliflower cheese with some hot paprika potatoes and a green chilli and coriander sauce. How are you going to make all these things look refined? Well, this is going to be the big challenge for me. I was hoping to practice the dish last night and then had a power cut at my house. So I've got ideas about how I want to present it, but I haven't yet been able to present it uh, in the way I want. We know Robert's a graft and he gets through a lot of work, but can he do it with a little bit of refinement? He's going to do a balancing of chicken. He's going to serve that on beans. And to my mind, there are two sauces. And at the last count, I think there were five different vegetables on there as well. To do well on this dish, I have to execute it perfectly. There's little margin for error, so that's going to be on the money. Otherwise, I think, you know, little mistakes now will really cost you. We saw success with chocolate on Albert Square from you, Jack. And today, by the looks of it, we've got chocolate once again. <laughs> yeah, today I'm doing a chocolate fondant with a pistachio cream, pistachio and hazelnut brittle caramel sauce, and if I've got time, some honeycomb as well. Jack's promising us a chocolate fondant, a praline and a toffee sauce. And then he's also going to put some honeycomb on it. So much sugar on that plate. It's going to be really sticky and very sweet, and I hope for his sake it's not too sweet. You've had 20 minutes. I can't believe it. 20 minutes are gone. Today I'm going to give it everything. I like my dish and it's very tasty. I've just got to try and make it look beautiful and I struggle with that sometimes. What are you cooking for us, Angela? Today I'm doing loin of hare with celeriac, apples and blackberries and a port and cassis sauce. You are a wonderful cook. Are you ambitious as well? Do you know? You will... I want to go to the end. I want to be there. I love it. I'm really... It's, it's the best experience. It's, I don't want it to end. Angela's doing her hair. That's strong. I actually trust Angela's palette. But refinement is still something that may elude her. You're halfway. 35 minutes left. Someone's running. If you would single out anyone who was a little bit weak in the last task, I think it would definitely be me. Today, I've got finishing the top two, I reckon, to be safe. And I'm not going to do that by playing safe. What are you going to make? Today, I'm doing surf and turf, but kind of my style. So we've got teriyaki fillet steak. Uh, then I've got Indian puri bread stuffed with scallops that have been marinated in a Caribbean style green curry paste. To sort of finish everything off, we've got the Thai yellow curry sauce. 
So we go Japan, we go India, we go Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, hopefully I can bring it all together. With a stopover in Jamaica? Yeah, why not? I dreamt about this dish last night and I dreamt that you were making us cook it for 60. Uh, and I was sleepwalking around my room <laughs> and I didn't know what was going on. And it was back to reality. You're not making me cook it for 60, you're just making me do it once. Let's get on with it. <laughs> Luke is doing what Luke loves to do, and that's cook lots of different things and put them on one plate. I don't know what it's going to taste like, I don't know what it's going to look like, because you can't, because Luke is original. It either works or it don't. My last dish that I cooked in the studio was my weakest round so far. It's quite easy to lose focus on the things that you were good at that got you to where you are in the competition. Today I want to get back to that. What are you making? I'm making lamb, turnips, pickled onions and watercress. And we're using three different cuts of lamb, uh, some cheap ones, the neck fillet, which is, I know what you guys liked about where I started in this competition. I just want to make a delicious plate of food for you guys. Michael's a clever cook. He's had an epiphany. He understands what he's got to do. He's cooking food that he really does believe in. Now, that fills me full of confidence. Today, I'm going to make my take on a banana split because it reminds me of my childhood and when my mom used to take me out for, you know, a treat. I only get to see her once a year and that's why I miss her. This one's for my mom. What are you making, Ping? Chocolate lava cake with peanut butter mousse and a deep fried banana. Wow. So it's the flavours from a banana split. Can you tell me where your drive for this competition is coming from? I just want to do well and I want my family to be proud of me. Oh, Ping! Mm. Ping is doing a lava cake. Then she's got a banana wrapped in pastry and a peanut butter mousse. All three of those things are sweet and sticky. There's no cream to unsticking it, and it's bothering me. You have got just 10 minutes left. Two and a half minutes left. It's got to look refined as well as taste refined. Time's up. Stop. Angela's dish is loin of hare with fried celeriac, celeriac puree, apples cooked in thyme butter, blackberries, and a chocolate port and cassis sauce. I still don't think you've got presentation, right? Don't you? I think cutting it down into little bits is better, but you're, you're still not quite there. Delicious. <laughs> Thanks. Really, hair is probably the strongest game you can have. It's really rich, and to get that right and for it to become subtle is a really difficult thing. Uh, you've done that. I think the sauce with it is beautiful, sweet with chocolate, sharp with a blackberry, and it's a joy to eat. Wow, you can cook. You can cook. Like the earthy celeriac, like the sweet apple, like the sweet berry, love the sauce, love the way you've cooked the hair. Your touch in your palate is great. Thank you very much. I'm feeling really happy. It's so nice when they like the taste of your food. It's like, woof. Relief. Luke has made his version of surf and turf. Teriyaki beef fillet on a bed of garlic spinach. Indian puri bread stuffed with scallops marinated in Caribbean curry paste. Potato domes. And a Thai yellow curry sauce.
I have to tell you, I'm not that excited by it. Okay. It's not a disaster, Luke, and I understand your mind, but for me, the flavour combination of that soy and coconut milk and that Thai curry just does not work at all. Okay. The potatoes are cooked brilliantly. Those, those scallops inside that bread is cooked really well. I love the texture on the steak. Luke, you've cooked everything really well, but you've completely muddled all these flavours. You really have. A bit disappointed, obviously. Um, I am a risk taker. <laughs> uh, if you live on the edge, you're going to fall off eventually. <laughs> Ping has made a dessert of chocolate lava cake with peanut butter mousse, caramelized banana spring roll, and a tempered chocolate ribbon. Love the look of it. I think it's great. I love the gold leaf sitting on top. I like the fact you've got a swirl of chocolate to show a little bit more technique. And I want to crack open that pudding because it looks like it's about to ooze all over the plate. Hey, look at that. Good job, you. I was really, really concerned that this was going to be all sticky and sweet. But it's not, because your chocolate lava cake is bitter. You've got this lovely natural sweetness of banana and then you've got the crispness of that spring roll pastry on the outside. But you have one issue with this plate, Ping. There ain't enough of that delicious peanut butter mousse. Because, I mean, that's really good. But me and the ball bloke, right, have had a couple of mouthfuls and both of us are scraping around for peanut butter mousse. It's very good, Ping. Thank you. That chocolate cake is divine. Your versatility seems to know no bounds at all. That is as mellow and as creamy as you like. And that peanut butter mousse is a revelation to me. Slightly salty like peanut butter would be, but creamy and lighter than peanut butter is, and sweet, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Well done. <laughs> well done. Hey, Pink, give me a so I'm overjoyed. <laughs> I nailed it, so yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant feeling. Michael has served three cuts of lamb, neck fillet, loin, and sweetbreads with watercress puree, turnips, pickled onions, and a lamb stock and Madeira sauce. Lovely texture on, on your sweetbreads. Love the bite of the turnip. Like how rare the loin is. But I don't want to eat that neck. It, it needs more cooking. If that came up to me in a restaurant, I'd send it back. And the salt you put on those sweetbreads is, is ridiculous. These lumps here are salt crystals. I mean, they are enormous sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place here because I admire certain parts of the dish and other bits I feel slightly disappointed with. I like the watercress puree. I like the sweetness of your lamb. I think you're a great cook, Michael. I think you've got great technique. I think you've got a great way of thinking about food. But there are a lot of problems on here, though, as Greg has said. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. I was aware before they even tasted it where the errors were and was kicking myself whilst waiting for them to come round. Remember these words. Robert has made a ballotine of chicken stuffed with Spanish black pudding, served on a casserole of houdillon beans and chorizo, cauliflower and manchego cheese puree, paprika roast potatoes, tempura vegetables, and a salsa verde. I admire the work. I don't think you've succeeded in making this look like one plate of food. No. 
it looks like a collection of some of Robert's favourite nibbles. I like the chicken, the ham and the black pudding, which brings a little bit of spice. I really like the sharpness of your salsa verde. I really like the idea of the cauliflower puree cheese there as well. I like them all individually. I don't know how to eat it, though. I don't know how to eat it other than go into it in individual little bits. I admire your work, but this is not a plate of food as such. The chicken with the ham and the black pudding and the beans is a lovely, lovely thing. And in my opinion, that's where you should have stopped. By putting a salsa verde on and deep fried vegetables and crispy potatoes and cauliflower cheese, it's just detracting from that central part with the beans and the chicken. Having not been able to taste the dish, it's hard for me to argue with their comments. You know, I think it's a nice dish, but I'm sure their, their criticisms were valid. Finally, it's Jack. His dessert is a chocolate fondant with pistachio cream, a pistachio and hazelnut brittle, honeycomb, and a caramel sauce. It's looking good. It looks like fun, Jack. We've got a nice soft centre, that's good. Very good. You have a slight crispness around the outside of your chocolate fondant, which I like. What at first I thought was odd turns out to be fantastic, and that's the fact that you haven't sweetened the pistachio cream because you need something mellow to dampen down all that sweetness. Well done. Thank you. Jack, some lovely work. I love the fondant, crispy on the outside, oozy centre. Your praline with the pistachios is really, really wonderful but it doesn't all belong together. It's too much on one plate. But I like it. So we'll have to arm wrestle this one or toss a coin. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Cheers. I feel quite mixed after that one. There were some good things about it and some negative things about it as well, so I feel I probably could have could done better. To the six of you, thank you very, very much. To be cooking food at this level as amateurs is an extraordinary thing. One of you will be leaving the competition. We need to make that decision. We'll call you back in as soon as we possibly can. I like these six. I really do. I don't want to get rid of one. Ping did a great job on Albert Square, running the team. She's just done a great job here with her own refined dish. That chocolate fondant and that peanut butter mousse was brilliant. Ping's had a great couple of days and she deserves to go through to the final five. I, I think Ping is going from strength to strength. I've got to say, I'm impressed. Actually, I've got to say I'm impressed with the girls today. Uh, not just Ping, but I think Angela today has done a ripper. Angela seems incapable of serving a posh dish. But, John, she cooks. She cooks brilliantly. Her food tastes amazing. I agree with you. Presentation, not quite there. She'll get there. I'd rather teach a presentation than teach how to cook. And now for the boys. Can we just have a chat about Jack? Yes. Because I really liked his dessert. You tore into Jack today over, over his dessert, which I thought was a little harsh. I didn't tear into him. There was a little bit too much going on. A little bit. A little bit. I'm having such a good time, I'm really enjoying the whole experience, so to continue on in the competition would mean a massive amount to me and I really would love to stay in it after today, but, but who knows. Michael. Oh, Michael has seriously disappointed me today. Oh, really? I've been a champion of Michael for a long, long time, but I tell you what, he served me a raw neck of lamb and completely and utterly over-seasoned sweetbread. I think Michael could be a really good cook. I think John and Greg are probably a little bit frustrated with me, but hopefully they liked the things that they liked enough to, to give me another shot. I don't know what to make of Robert anymore. I don't know where he's going with his food. 
that today was no way was that a dish, John. That's a collection of things that you've picked up walking along the buffet. Robert does a lot of work, but I do wonder for what reason sometimes. I'd be gutted to leave if I did leave. I just hope that at the end of the day, I've done enough to go forward. I can't think of Luke without breaking into a smile because his mind works in such an incredible way. He's used to taking different flavours and styles from around the world and making them work. Today, it didn't work, John. Luke is, is playing with fire here. But the thing is, you and I love his invention, love his style, love his thought process when he gets it right. But today, he got it wrong. They know I'm creative. Will that be enough? <laughs> I don't think so this time, but you never know. There have been mistakes today, but I think our job as judges is to work out who's going to learn from it and who's going to carry on making mistakes. And who are you willing to take a bet on? For us today, two of you really stood out as being solid cooks. Those two cooks, Angela and Ping. Congratulations, you stay with us. Well done. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we have to lose one of you. person leaving the competition. This Robert. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, it's a tough competition. I didn't cook as well as I could have done, and I probably deserve to go home. I'm very proud of what the comments I've got. I'm proud of the food that I've cooked. and I think it's been a tremendous experience. This time, I really thought I'd had it. It's just incredible. I'm just like, so excited. I'm feeling delighted to be through and extraordinarily lucky to sort my act out, I think. I can't believe that I'm here. To be here is just an amazing, amazing feeling. Final five, that is good. Final five, that's brilliant. I can't wait for what lies ahead. There's such a great feeling, so I want more of it. Next time, the battle to stay in the competition continues. <gasps> Sorry! When the five amateurs are pushed to a level they've never experienced before. Go, go. You ruin this, it's over. You're panicking, Jack. I'm not panicking, I've just got a lot to do, John. It's like panic to me. <laughs> I think when I taste this, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs>